Picacho Peak State Park outside Tucson, Arizona. And I wanted to give a real world review on my brand new 23 Tab Boondock 320S. There seems to be a lot of RV reviews and not a lot of real world reviews of usage of this trailer. Now I've had it about two months and I'm in four trips now and everything's going good. But there are a few things that I wanted to talk about and address when it comes to this model. And it's nearly perfect. I have no complaints so far. With that being said, I'm not here to give a full-fledged review on how all the systems and everything on this trailer works. You can look that up on any other YouTube RV review or salesperson's page. And before we get into the trailer itself, I want to get into my tow vehicle since many people have questions about that on the pages and forums. I am towing with a 2019 Toyota Tacoma. So for anybody that wonders about any small truck SUV, this is going to be a good real world review on that. Now I have my truck set up on some bigger tires or 33 inch tires. So it took a little bit of the power out of this truck. It's not too bad. And a lot of people complain about the transmissions on it. It's not the transmission. It's actually the computer programming and the gearing they put in these trucks. But it pulls this trailer very nicely. And in all honesty, I haven't pulled any travel trailers. But this is about as much weight as I would comfortably want to pull with a truck this size. It does just good enough up and down mountains. It's perfect on flats, but you get into a 20 mile an hour headwind and uh, you're definitely gonna feel it and you're probably not gonna be able to use cruise control. I do leave it in the manual Matic mode on tow haul. You don't wanna be gear hunting up and down and burn your transmission out. Now, since I live in the Southwest, there are times we get some hellacious winds out here. And the first trip out, it figured, I was heading into a 25 to 40 mile an hour headwind. And I'll tell you what, this little trailer didn't do anything weird. It didn't bob, sway, buck, or anything. Now, it did bog the truck down. I had to keep my foot in it, but it pulled it just nicely. Other than maybe having some side winds gust at about 40 miles an hour, I'd feel a little wiggle, or maybe if a big heavy truck or semi had passed me going pretty fast. Um, I can keep her about 75 on the highway if it's a clear, smooth, flat day. Doing 55 to 65 is the sweet spot, especially for fuel mileage on this truck. And uh, for the most part, I try to stick to those kind of roads. I've had it off-road once. And this thing did pretty good. Nothing crazy. Some pretty smooth dirt roads and a little bit of light articulation. I don't think I'd put it through anything more than that. And uh, it rode really, really smooth. So now we'll go through uh, some of the stuff on this thing that I added and uh, what it needs or doesn't need or maybe a new camp could probably improve on in the future, which is almost nothing because this thing's almost perfect. But I did add these side boxes. I couldn't find anything in the right shape size to fit this that would look right. So I did have to break down and spend the money. But I'll tell you what, these Sea Biscuit Designs boxes are some of the best quality of anything that I've ever bought they're fully seam welded and almost completely sealed they're even better than our factory box now they don't come with locks but I have some locks I'll be putting on here later on now there are many arguments on this but I opted to add a Kurt Sway control bar because like I said, we live out in the desert southwest and some of these side winds and gusts can get pretty crazy at times. But I think the key is that I don't over tighten this thing. I leave it pretty hand snug when on the highway. Now off the highway, I'll loosen it up and uh, let her move. And I think a lot of the issue that people have with these, maybe bending the frame or doing anything like that, backing up, reversing, turning, is they are over tightening this thing. I can loosen it up a little, back in and around, do all kinds of tight turns, and it does just fine if you have it mounted correctly. I do have a Kurt Rocker Ball. And what this does 
is it gives just a little rock forward and back with a cushion in here and it is greasable. The company claims that it will not work with their sway control, but I'm going to tell you right now, it works absolutely perfectly. As long as you don't leave that over tightened. Now without it, this ball is free to move back and forth very easily. And I'll tell you what, this is absolutely amazing. All that tug and chug forward and back when you leave a light and you come to a stop is almost virtually eliminated. I am very impressed with this thing so far. I can't believe it actually works that well. For those wondering what the real world power consumption is on this, if you're pretty conservative and you're off the grid, using your gas for heat and your battery, which I opted for just a cheap lead acid deep cycle. It's only 81 amp hours. In a very cold climate of about 25 at night, using the heater, hot water to keep things from freezing up, I did run out of battery in about a day and a half. So by the second night, middle of the night, I ran out of power. And that is even with the solar panel in an optimum position. Now, that's not their fault. I am going to upgrade to 100 amp hour lithium here soon. But that is the real world usage on your power consumption. Now, if you're in a good climate like I am here today, we're getting down to about 35, 40 at night. So the heater isn't struggling and I'm getting optimal solar. This thing would probably be able to run indefinite on that little 81 amp hour lead acid, but it's getting close. So I wouldn't push it too far. I do carry a Blue Eddy as a backup. So we're gonna take a look at the outside of this trailer and I really think this is the best rendition of the tab that uh, New Camp has made so far. They've went to this cassette toilet that I think is super smart for only having a five gallon capacity in the first place. You can take that out, dump it in a, a pit toilet somewhere very nicely. Maybe if you're off grid situation, dig a nice deep hole. I'm not recommending any of this, but I found that that's actually a cleaner thing to do than uh, off grid camping and leaving uh, cat holes everywhere with paper in them. One of the other things that I've been noticing that New Camp did and really tells you they pay attention to their customers is to keep making subtle changes. The system before with this outside shower, the hose reeled in and people were saying they had problems with hitting plumbing and getting leaks. Well, now they have a quick disconnect shower system and that eliminates that problem. This updated Nautilus system is also pretty awesome too. Being able to siphon fill from a jug and that works out great for campgrounds like this that you don't have a water hookup. I can take my water jug here, fill it up at the spigot and siphon fill into the trailer. Okay, now going on to the inside. I hear a lot of people that complain about this trash can. Well, I'll tell you what, it works out, for me at least, just perfect to be able to put some odds and ends, some trash in there, keep extra bags. No complaint on there. Now there are a few things I have done in here so far that aren't factory, but I think made a nice addition. I added this uh, sink strainer, it gives me a little bit of extra space to put stuff. I've also put a little mat right here around the sink to keep dripping down, splashing, put my soap. I came up with this for a paper towel holder since we've lost space up here to put anything. And since it wasn't quite working correctly, I just use one of these wire ties on each side of it and it keeps the paper towels from falling down. I also found these really neat suction cup racks. And this one worked out perfect to make a shelf to keep my odds and ends and coffee up here near the sink. I also have a couple in the bathroom. I have a soap tray. And I have a toothbrush tray or bottled soap tray here in the bathroom. One thing I'd really like to see New Camp do, is, since we're limited to space here, is change this toilet paper holder out to a recessed wall holder. I think Dometic makes a really nice one that may be able to flush mount inside of that wall. 
but I don't have any complaints in the shower or bathroom so far and I've used it a few times it is a little short as you can see I'm about 5'7 and I got plenty of head height to get to almost the back of this trailer so that works out great for me because I'm short and in the shower it's a little tight you can see I will bump my head right into this light but most of the time I sit here showering down this way and it's not a problem at all or you can sit down on the toilet to even have a bathroom shower at all is an extreme luxury for me while camping especially coming from 25 years of tent camping maybe one other thing that I think new camp could address is maybe adding some soft close hinges to these if they make them somehow because when these things close and flap down they're pretty loud I did add some of these little bumpers which help a little bit at least keep the rubbing down but uh that kind of needs to be addressed i think or maybe they could add in the european style that curves down into here that would be really cool get a little more storage too right now i have the bed set up into a dinette slash bed and when i'm ready i'll pull this table out set it outside and make my full bed but it is kind of nice to be able to get in and out Maybe sit here, watch some TV, eat some lunch or dinner. So far, I've added a hook here to keep my keys and headlamp. And I've also added a hook here just to keep my coffee mug. And my little cactus here because I needed a plant. That's prick prickly. <laughs> so other than those few modifications, that's about all I've done. And honestly, I don't want to over clutter this thing. It's already a small space and I'd like to keep it nice and kind of clean looking. But for one person, a couple maybe, this is an absolutely perfect trailer. I have zero complaints with this trailer so far. Everything is working flawlessly. I keep up on maintenance. I keep looking for some things to come loose. I haven't found any yet. Um, it is a trailer. It is going down the road shaking. So I guess maybe one day there'll be some issues. But as far as that goes, that's normal wear and tear. I think that... Uh, New Camp definitely does their homework. I think this trailer so far has been absolutely perfect. And uh, New Camp really pays attention to what customers are doing and saying about their products. There's a lot of tweaks and changes from year to year to correct the issues that people seem to be having. And that to me is pretty dang good. Now with all that being said, I'm not a professional YouTuber here. This is my first review of this trailer but I'd like to give some people some insight. You don't see a lot of people doing any kind of real world reviews once again. And uh, maybe I'll update it here in the next couple months. I try to get out about every three weeks. So we're gonna be putting her to the test. Well, that's my first review of uh, my little tab trailer. Hopefully it helps some people out, maybe trying to figure out whether or not they want to get one or whether or not it's gonna work out. I'm no professional at this, but I figured I'd give it a go and uh, Maybe I'll do a part two or three or maybe some more. We'll see. Thanks for watching.